The Deepwater Horizon oil spill began on April 20th in the Gulf of Mexico. The spill followed a blowout that caused an explosion on an offshore drilling rig, which then sank off the coast of Louisiana. Eleven rig workers are missing and presumed dead, and 17 others were seriously injured. The spill covers a surface area of more than 6,500 square kilometers, and the Deepwater oil well is said to be discharging up to 4 million liters of crude oil daily. This has been considered the worst U.S. oil disaster in history. On May 7, 2010, John Wathen and pilot Tom Hutchins flew out over the Gulf of Mexico. Along the way, we saw small boats dragging buoys out to the islands to protect them from the oil sheen that was certainly coming our way. At nine miles out, we began to smell the oil. At 11 miles out, we saw a visible sheen on top of the water. Heavy streaking was evident at about mile 15. Mile 26, we began to see solid oil on top of the water with a heavy sheen and numerous streaks at mile 34. Mile 87, ground zero. My first view of the site was one of tremendous impact. I'll never forget the scene. These are not small boats. While standing at a dock looking at them, they look like large ships. They're dwarfed in comparison to what I see on the horizon. Nothing but a red mass of floating goo that could have been prevented and should have been prevented. I was horrified when I looked and saw how many boats there were on the horizon. It didn't seem to be doing anything at all that was effective. Going around in circles, small boats with booms on the back of them sent out to gather up oil in what looked like teacups compared to the horizon. We counted 30 boats in the pictures, all floating around while this stuff was headed for shore. Nobody seemed to be able to do anything about it. For the first time in my environmental career, I find myself using the words hopeless. We can't stop this. There's no way to prevent this from hitting our shorelines. The best I think we can do is minimize the impact learn from our mistakes. We have to have fuel, we have to have gasoline. The price we're paying now is far too expensive. Safety measures that could have prevented this were not in place. It's time for our government to step up to the plate and take responsibility for what's happening on the shores of our country. Several waterkeeper programs along the coast have already been impacted and many more are expecting landfall. Along with other environmental groups up and down the coast, it should be mentioned that this is not only an environmental disaster, but a social disaster as well. Fishermen out of work. Oyster shuckers, no work. People work in the docks all up and down the coast People are canceling reservations. Fishing boats are not going out. The economic impact to this event will be incredible and felt for decades to come. No one knows if the fishing will ever recover. No one knows if the Gulf will ever heal from this. One thing for certain, we must learn from the mistakes that have been made here. This cannot happen again. The Gulf appears to be bleeding. Will we ever be able to stem the tide? Will we ever be able to put a stop to this? Will the Gulf ever heal? As far as you can see on the horizon now, there's these mats of this reddish pink sheen. It was easy to find our way back to shore. All we had to do was follow the red. There was a perfect line of it leading from the rig toward the shoreline. Here right off Ship Island, 
at Horn Island, we found Sheen behind the islands and in the sound. Preparations had been made, but will it be enough? Dolphin Island in Alabama. We saw Sheen coming ashore at the far end of the island. That was on May the 7th. On May the 8th, they found tarballs. <laughs>